Good evening, everyone. It's Wednesday. <laughs> I've um, been pondering a few things. Matthew and I went to the beach the other day and we were talking about unity and diversity and the power of love. Also the love of power. One unites and one separates. So I thought it'd be really, really interesting to discuss the power of love that unites. It really is something of an inner process that we are all on the subconscious level and on what's around us all the time um, about taking care of yourself, being yourself, live the best. And there's like a undercurrent that feels that and I would like to talk about it. But in the meantime, I want to see if um, when's a good time to start. So I'll look and see who's here. Just a minute. Don't go away. Hello, Donald. I hope you are well today. Erica and Verpi, hi. Hi, Lori and Lily, hi. And Myra and Juliet, hello. I hope you got my message about glazes. Good evening to everyone. We got Drew and Yvonne. Good evening. And Richard, hi. I hope you're doing well. Isabel. Thank you, Lily. I love making sculptures. Hi, Sean and Power of Love and the Love of Power. Yep. Well, keep your seatbelts on. <laughs> Hi, Stefan. Okay, well, let's begin. I don't know um, about you, but I'm a 60s girl. Drew, you can watch the um, replays if you like, which I hope you'll do. Anyway, um, they'll be on YouTube every week. If you can't catch it on my um, normal pages, by the way, I'm having a newsletter every maybe two weeks to a month with inspiring things like the text that will go with this evening will be in a newsletter. If you um, are interested, please um, post me your emails and we'll put you on the list. So, right. <laughs> Well, as I was saying, I was a 60s girl. And it was interesting to, I was like, I'd been in college two years, studying chemical engineering, would you believe? And then I um, went into modeling as well as studying at Michigan State University. And things just started to change in another way. And I discovered that I was more an artist than a chemical engineer. So I got involved with two men that had a um, paraphernalia clothing. And it was um, the ethos behind those shops and their clothes was very um, opening. And in the 60s, something on a collective level happened. And if you look through history, there's always some energy that comes, a thought, a keynote, that comes that suddenly awakens the collective all across the world. 
And in the 60s, it was peace and love. We weren't all um, accepted. My mom, who loved Johnny Mathis, <laughs> couldn't quite grasp Frank Zappa. <laughs> Oh, and I didn't have headphones, so it, the sound would um, sometimes creep across the house. <laughs> and then when it turned out that I, um, I had two dreams. One was to be an actress and one was to find love on the personality level. And it happened. David and I, our hearts just went <laughs> At least that was my experience. I'm pretty sure it was his too, because we just couldn't stay away from each other. Anyway, the point of bringing this up is that we're all part of um, the evolution of consciousness, which I've mentioned before. And the 60s certainly brought a big boom, we went into the um, green movement. All our food had to be organic. Well, it started to be organic. What really was um, happening is that the idea of being holistic started coming in. So it brought in ideas based around the body, the spirit, the mind, and we we're all on that path in some way. And the collective for all of us is really um, calling us to be holistic. I mean, I don't, don't know if you've noticed, but even the little tiny ads on telly is all about exercise, take this vitamin, be happy. And then there's the pressure that comes so subtly to us that we have to be ourselves, discover who we are, meditate, awaken, care. And it's, it's interesting. Where does that energy come from? Sometimes I ask, but it's, it's quite a force. And it's, it's like the, the power of life. Lily, the color healer that I studied with for many years until she passed over, um, used to say, humanity's not going to advance until they start realizing that everything is energy. Every part of us is some form of energy, a molecular structure that has the spaces between the atoms and, and every, everything is to do with energy. And what's fascinating is that love not the romantic love, but that could be pretty one <laughs> with the life force. Um, it's the power of life. We have to get used to having this within us because the phase we're in right now is that we can create together our universe. We've been playing around with it since the 60s that we could um, do this together. But it requires us to um, work together, to accept the differences of who we are. My computer's just come off of its battery back on. I hope I didn't lose you. Um, so on one level, we have to learn to use well, to accept that this exists, that we are it, that we have the power to create our lives. And then take it further, that we have the power to create the world. We don't have to accept all this. A lot of it is to do with fear. And somewhere in there, it's like when I was working at the center, we were, we worked with a lot of people with a diff, lot of disharmonies. And it's amazing how many 
people would come in and, and be full of sorrow because their relationship wasn't working. That maybe the husband or the wife went off and created adultery. And when you ask, why do you stay there? And it all comes back down to security. So what does a person do that in that situation? They put on a dimmer switch. They anise themselves. Because we all have in our hearts a longing for a deeper love. And the moment you start anesthetizing yourself, your heart starts to close down. And to open that again is an interesting challenge. I want to see how are you doing. I don't want to leave you hanging like that, but here it is. <laughs> We're in it together. Oops. Right. Okay, Juliet, we can discuss it some more if you like. Not tonight. Um, okay, well, as I, it, Juliet's experience, um, experimenting with varnishes that I told her about how to create a dimensional aspect. At least that's what I do in my work. To where you're playing with some areas being a reflection of light. Opaque and acrylics tend to do that. And then I put glazes on and I use translucent and transparent colors to where the light will also go deep. So you're creating an or an etheric aspect which will touch the viewer whether they realize it or not it'll be like oh that's familiar and then you create images that touches their hearts um, their deeper heart Lily was born in 62 well you were just a baby then her be wishes say she had been in the 60s. 66 is when I got here. Okay. Erica thinks the 60s are fantastic. Dawn got here at 52 and I share the anniversary of wish you were here. <laughs> That's also the anniversary of us getting married. I'd already been here for about four years. And he got back off of one of the animal tour, was it? And he proposed. And they were in the uh, studio on the day that we got married, July 7th, 1975. <laughs> I know, Juliet. Our parents were, um, they had great integrity. They were very much aligned with their upbringing and their collective um, viewpoint. And we, the 60s certainly um, brought in a change. I mean, as I said, Frank Zappa, when I went off with, what's that Pink Floyd thing? <laughs> oh dear, it took her quite a while to um, get used to my shift. And then I had gotten a lead role in a film and I left I went off with Dave. Yeah, my mum loved classical music too. So now we're in another phase, which really requires us to be holistic, but to go not on the internet all the time, but to go on the inner net because we have to build our self-esteem so that it um, controls what's happening and, and watch out for that dimmer switch because um, 
A lot of unhappiness is in that dimmer switch, but it takes a lot of courage to um, sort of close your eyes and say, all right, tell me what I have to do. I trust you. The creative force, the life force of life, direct me. And um, I've done that several times in my life up to now, maybe more than several. But it took a lot of courage to step out of the dimmer switch. And I have to be very grateful. I had a few elders around me at the time that really um, shined the light on me. Hi, Linda Landers. Welcome. <laughs> Lori, that's fantastic. She refers to her acupuncturist as her electrician. Great way of describing things. And yes, Pauline, love is a frequency, but so is the power of love. And the power of love is misdirect, not the power of love, what am I saying? The love of power was what I wanted to say, because that separates us. There's a lot of judgment in that. And we have, I think we're, um, we're not indoctrinated properly about this because somewhere in there with the love of power, we're being misled because you need to love the power that is us, most definitely. But the power of love brings in a um, compassion and empathy for others around and also what you create. And the power of the life force is calling you all the time to create. And it starts with you, creating you. That's what counts. Get your self-esteem up and running because what you will create, every person is a drop in the life force. We have a choice. We have to make it because it's, I think it's, it's what we're in a way, one thing that we're learning through COVID, through climate change. We all have to take the responsibility and if you connect to that energy source inside you, which connects you to everything else in life, the power of that heals and transforms and we're just budgies full of fear. And they want us this, whoever wants to um, control our energy force is um, playing with that. And I'm here to help you be the beauty of who you are, without a doubt. <laughs> and I'm gonna look at your comments some more. <laughs> Lily fully accepts she's trying to create and understand my energy you've helped in this journey well as they say we're all in it together and we, people have wonderful smiles Burpees had only ear acupuncture, not the full body acupuncture, but I love ear acupuncture. I miss it. Dare I tell you a story? <laughs> My first encounter with acupuncture was at George Harrison's house. We were invited over for dinner and he had this most amazing acupuncture person and he took me upstairs. I will never forget the release and the tears and the crying. The crying that wouldn't stop. I mean, it was like a lifetime. And it was, I was so embarrassed because it was so loud. Because <laughs> I couldn't control it. And I was a shy person at the time. So thought, I mean, George Harrison's house 
crying my eyes out really loud. <laughs> but um, it didn't seem to matter because he said he went through things like that too, so it's normal. <laughs> yeah, goodness, life's experiences. Hi, Beta. Welcome. Linda, I hope my paintings invite you to find that good vibe inside you because that's the um, purpose and uh, your responses are important to me. Juliet says, I completely understand the dimmer switch. That happened to me a couple times and then I took the leap of faith. Scary. But it had to happen and I felt proud of myself. It was tricky and it probably took too long, but I did it. We all have our timing of when this happens. I don't know if I ever told you. I saw, I went to the Body, Mind and Spirit exhibition a long time ago. And Carolyn Mice was um, giving a lecture. And she brought in this idea that when we're born, we have a lot of electrical leads with plugs at the end. And in the beginning, a lot of plugs go into survival, into our parents, into our religion, into our culture, into our desires. And it just goes on as you get older. And then suddenly one day, your soul goes, hello. It's time to wake up. <laughs> I remember the day and all I had was one wire, one plug. So I had to start taking one out, one out, one out. Some people think, oh, when they get that, they're going to pull out all the plugs and you can freak out. I wouldn't advise it, but if it happens, then Hold on to your horses, as they say. <laughs> oh, but I'll tell you one thing, as Cecil Collins, my art teacher, used to say, a man without a vision or a woman without a vision isn't alive. And also, if you're an artist in any way, even in the art of living, he would say that a, mass, um, a good work of art is a mastery of technique and different thought forms and philosophies and all of it is important but if you want to create the masterpiece of who you are or if you want to live the love all within us the potential of the mastery of living and we have such potential then you have to wake up and release the illusions little by little. You don't rush in really fast. Lily used to say to us, it's one thing to, when you're giving healings to people or talking to them, advising them, inspiring them, don't take away all the crutches straight away or all the illusions. Because if you do, and they see it, but they don't have the tools to go forward. They'll fall flat on their face and they may never look at it again. So even with yourself, we have to um, look at it with great compassion and patience and trust that the vision is as important as the steps that we take. Richard was saying, I think the biggest problem with regards to climate change is that there are too many people in the world that just don't, wait a minute, don't care. Hi Kimberly, ah, I'll put you on my love list for the 4th of May. And Linda says, yes, thank you. I think it's important. We remind each other of the inner person. I love the, the term, the inner net. I'll be using that a lot. 
<laughs> Burpee says, it sounds like the first and only time I got Reiki, not long distance Reiki. It released all kinds of things in my troubled mind and I think the person who gave me Reiki got scared too. I cried a lot and felt all kinds of energies. It was scary, but cool. And yes, I was sober. <laughs> Erica says, the pressure on normal people to save the climate is so misplaced. Although recycling, eating clean, etc. helps a little, it's really on the big corporations to stop the mass pollution done by their factories, but they are too money hungry. The love of power, I would say. Super frustrating. Ah, Linda, Cecil was your personal tutor at the Central. S amazing, small world as I say. Pauline thinks Carolyn Mice was a breath of fresh air. I saw her on Oprah 20 years ago and she opened my eyes. Interesting, she was the one person <laughs> that I would keep sending CDs to my parents. And they really started getting attached to listening to her. So it doesn't matter how old you are. Um, Gurdjieff said that he, you can, um, even in the last moment, you can have realization. So just keep on the path. Yeah. What I find we need to um, think about, I want to plant a seed here. The corporations have um, a lot of power and there needs to be an awakening there. And I know several people that are um, working with organizations to raise their consciousness. But I know the individual power of who we are doesn't have to think they're the ones that are doing it. Because we get together, life wants us to be happy and to care. They don't, we, we have to stop thinking they've got the power, basically. I know it's difficult because everything that goes on in the news and everything, it's just always like nobody cares about anything and that there isn't any way. Well, there is a way. It's inside our inner net. And the, every time one of us wakes up, it adds and adds and it grows. And you know, I really truly know actually how that can shift your individual lives and the world. So we just have to go on girls and boys, men and women, and wake up to the power that is us with love. And I know we can do it. That's what our destiny really is. That's what we're here really to do. And somewhere in there we let we gave away our power. It's that dimmer switch. We got to find our dimmer switch and change it and learn how to um, not give away our power to somebody else because we're frightened. Maybe we don't even know as a child it might have happened when you were little. But that doesn't mean you can't change it now. I know you can change it now. And there's loads of people on the planet that are waking up to the fact that we can live the 60s in 2021. Yes, Laurie, the teacher will come when you're ready. It's a promise. And sometimes it will be without you even knowing it's there. But it can't, that teacher will come and guide you. And until then, there's always your guardian angel that I know is there taking care of you. And I'm 
got one, and I, there was a time at a party that Dave and I were giving when we lived near Henley. We always did a November 5th party, big one. And I was coming back in the house to get some more um, cups, I think it was, and there was this woman in the dark corner that just gently called my name, and I turned around and looked at her, and she said, Ginger, you must start to listen to your angels. And then I met Cecil Collins, and I had um, tea with him and Elizabeth. And as I was leaving, Elizabeth looks down at me. They had a, their living room was on the top floor in Poulton Terrace in London. And she said to me, Ginger, you must listen to your angels. Okay, that's twice now few years in between and Cecil always painted fools and angels the angels he said was um, the symbol of the purity of what we are what life is the love and that the fool was um, jumped about a lot going hello don't believe in that illusion. Find the truth. And that one keeps waking up every time you go through a new cycle of awakening. The fool jumps out. <laughs> oh, angels hold me. <laughs> Yvonne says... I absolutely share your opinion about the dimmer. If both partners would avoid to share their emotions, their hearts will close up. I would think both partners can experience to be loved, but that's for what we're here for, to share our hearts and being loved for the person you are and to let your heart and love radiate. And to do that, Yvonne, we have to do it to ourselves first. It's like we have been raised and some part of us deeply longs for love, but it's the love, the contact to the, the energy of life within us. And it's in a way, I mean, don't get me wrong, I really love personal love and companionship. But to reach that higher dimension with each other requires you to um, have a deeper relationship with yourself. Because somewhere in there, we all have a dimmer switch. Because we've been programmed to think that we can't be ourselves unless we have the car, the riches, the friends or even to even have a relationship what kind of relationship are you jumping into um, based on a, a need for security for love when you don't even love yourself and to love yourself means you will touch that place that's so amazing so full of love and everything you'll start to radiate it and you'll magnetize and live that, not only with yourself, but with another person. Burpee said, when I was younger, I would have needed a teacher. I was completely lost and went through different phases, but now I'm so used to finding my path myself that it's hard for me to imagine following someone. Well, Verbi, you'll probably be happy to know that there was a time in the evolution of consciousness where mankind had to identify with a group or a very visible teacher. But right now, in order to live the next phase of the power of love that we're talking about, building your self-esteem, going into the inner net, 
you, we all have to take our own individual responsibility. Mrs. Tweedy used to say, it's now time that we all swept in front of our doorsteps. And what our own doorstep. And then a new group, a oneness, a wholeness, which is what we're being called to do, which has many different colors, will happen. It will be a true oneness. But it starts with us. It starts with the wholeness of who you are. Hmm. Linda says that Cecil was her personal tutor and she wrote a little essay for the Blake Journal on Cecil many years ago. The internet seems, come on, a very good way to describe the connection, immersion in that sharing of energy. Linda, I, if you still have it, I'd love to read it if you feel um, that way, inclined. Burpee says, I somehow think that someone has been protecting me like a guardian angel. In some way, I believe that our bygone loved ones are watching over us. A lot of people feel that for sure. And Juliet says, she has a little chat with her angels and speaks out loud to them. Someone told me once that they need to hear you properly. Yes. I find it so therapeutic. I never really ask for anything. I just chat, which I'm good at, as you know. <laughs> Only wonderful vibration, vibrations from your chats, Juliet. They are being amazing to me. And this week, after one horrible thing, thing happened. I have had two amazing things happen out of nowhere. It does happen like that, I have to say. They were, um, Carolyn Mice said that in this process of being whole, the courage is to close your eyes. You don't necessarily ask for something. You asked to be advised to show the way for what you need to do and there's this lovely story there are a couple different stories around that um there was a man who traveled a long time ago traveled by cart and horse to sell his wares and one day after many 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 years his horse died and so he had to start pulling the um, cart for a while and he was coming around this corner and he saw this very old horse but he thought oh, I'll just get one of those and there were two angels up on the roof of the stables going I wish he just waited just a little while longer because he, he had no idea what kind of gift of a horse that we had waiting for him so it's a bit like, don't sell out too soon. <laughs> Richard apparently has a monk. I'm sure there are very wise beings here helping us in many ways. Burpee is saying... At the moment, I feel home, for example, here talking to you and we can all learn from each other. And hey, I also believe that living people can be guardian angels too. Totally. Mrs. Tweedy used to say, all you need is a person one step ahead of you. That will help you going up that spiral staircase to your meant to be born, to live, to create. I love this subject. Love, love, love. All you need is love. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. 
So I hope my internet is has been better tonight than um, what Matthew experienced last night. He was so sad about that, but his first song was amazing. He just pulls these things out of the air. And that's, he probably doesn't name it in any way or ex try to explain it or anything, but when it comes out of the air like that, in whatever you're doing, even creating a tasty dinner, or when some little tiny treasure of an energy comes to you, it's the life force reminding you, dropping sparkles on you to um, remember and you're great and we have to work on it, you know, to master this life through all the culturals and the religious upbringings and the even just the change to the next phase, the next cycle of being human, being human, not doing human, requires you to be able to be in in what you are daily and be ready to um, change. It's not wrong to change. Most of life is changing all the time. We just try to control things as opposed to being creators. I mean, I know that through my process as an artist, what it, and trying to be open and to whatever directive these hands have to do, what paints to bring, what brush to do, what to do, sometimes, I mean, some of my work took five years to finish. And another, some of the new ones are two days. And a friend of mine said, yeah, in 72 years. <laughs> that is really weird. But, um, gosh, life. So I have the color of thought sequence is um, finished on the first level. And they're all good, live. Um, replays on um, YouTube, my YouTube channel. Um, so I've moved into doing twice a week on Monday and Fridays. I'm calling it being creative. So you watch with me a new painting appearing. And I have, I wouldn't call it cheating, but I, the flow of the beginning of this painting being born was so strong the other night that I stayed up till one in the morning. Matthew couldn't believe it. We were watching Picard. We love Star Trek and Star Wars. Um, and suddenly he says to me, as I'm adding these little Demontes, tiny little Demontes, which I was really excited for weeks. I knew I had to get to this point. And um, and there I am, focusing and listening to Picard, putting it in, and he suddenly goes, Mom, do you realize it's midnight? I went, what? <laughs> I, I just, I really need to finish this before the morning. <laughs> it is morning. Anyway, next thing you know, hey, is wanting to finish the season of the card. The next thing you know, he goes, Mom, do you realize it's one in the morning? And I went, oh my God, I am just going to be so tired tomorrow. Well, I, I'm so attached to this painting. By the way, it's at four o'clock on Mondays and Fridays. Um, and then it will be on replay. The next sequence, and you know, can I share with you um, how it's going? Jump the queue of Friday. Hang on a minute.
Got it over here. I'll be right back. Here, I was going to take a picture of it to show you, but let's hope that I can. Let's see. I'm just going to look at my monitor. There we go. Look at that. So the rose came to me last night to do. It's still being worked on. That whole area up there has to be done. But those are the little demontes that I did and I have to finish the face and this morning these little guys of the universe I had I, I take my brush and put it in terps and a little bit of the paint and I splatter because life is a bit um, undefined and I have to and I have found that um, in my work to be representative of the visible and the invisible I have to do things of letting go and being very mentally focused at the same time and listen it's that finding that balance between letting go forming a structure a mental structure that's devoted both are devoted to whatever the finished harmony is of life whether it's a painting or dinner or washing the nappies whatever it is over the years um, this is what I've been working on thank you everyone it's um, I'm so happy to share it. I know Lily <laughs> It's incredible. There was a time I thought, if I don't get past that focusing of the Demontes, and I was so into it because it was like the light, the dripping of light was coming down. And each one is like um, a symbol. And it all started with the color of thought, where the first going through each color with a healing purpose that unites the person with that life force started to inspire and we keep I keep talking about different relationships of the masculine and the feminine principle with with spirit and this is just like another dimension for me because our world is so masculine dominated within ourselves too and it isn't necessary because the masculine helps create the form the feminine is the open vessel that brings the spirit in to give and share with the masculine principle to create the form that's visible. And humanity has allowed the masculine principle to dominate. And it isn't that the feminine person or the masculine person is better than one or the other. It's like we're working together and right now the feminine principle needs to be revealed and brought into balance. And the masculine, wonderful men, has a feminine. And it, I knew years ago that I was meant to work um, on revealing the feminine. But what I've discovered, it's more to do with the relationship of the masculine, feminine, and spirit principles. And if I can achieve that, I go through a catharsis with each picture, without a doubt. Um, I don't know if I showed you this one. This was the first one. It's coming. The Golden Empress. There she is. Now that was done in two days. There's still a little bit of work to finish um, glazing and finishing the, the gold leaf. But I started with gold leaf on there, knowing that um, in the color of thought, I would be talking about gold that week. But she just came and it was like, okay. So I'm quite excited about the next one because 
the images um, for like green was like, and orange was just so occupying my mind last night. And it was like, do you know, I didn't sleep until 5 a.m. I am usually in bed at 10. It was just, okay, you guys, if you want me to be deeply involved with these creations that are actually tuning in to what is great about being human and in the next cycle, you got to let me have a nice rest, really. <laughs> and it just shows me for this next level, I haven't, I got to, I don't know, find some other ways of um, putting a timber switch on it so I can sleep at night. Or just let it happen, but let my body sleep, please. It's just... <laughs> oh. Anyway. Um, do you know what? It's coming up. So we've done another hour. Oh my goodness. Well, this was fun. As I said, send me your um, emails so I can put you on my list for um, my newsletters. <laughs> yeah. And what else do I have to tell you? Um, I just wanted to help you understand that um, in the color of thought, I went through the principal colors and we were doing a lot of visualizing, focusing and opening up your perception and going deeper into the color that's reflected full of light. And um, the thing is, I can't take you deeper in this particular situation because the next step really requires a personal one-to-one -one Zoom training. Um, so that's possible. If anyone's interested, let me know. And they're always um, the basis of Cecil's teachings is um, available on my YouTube channel. They, he had a certain um, theoretical, experiential way of teaching us. There are basics to that in order to open up to your um, creative aspect that we are talking about tonight. So it's, it takes those lessons, take you through that with me talking and showing you examples and giving you exercises to where by the end of the five, six lessons, I think it was, you enter into color as well. Um, and it's a you taking your own responsibility with my guidance, but it's not like live one-to-one -one in that moment, but it's an inner process. Trust me, it works. And it's up to you what way is appropriate for you to evolve. I'm happy that um, we're doing this. Linda says, uh, gold is wonderful, and I'm so into ultramarine blue and cobalt blue at the moment. That, those two, co three colors, and of course pink slips in there. All the colors are slipping in there. And even in my color of thought lessons, red, which always was um, something I just use like a dot. Um, because Lily, color therapist, said that it's very um, rare that we use that color. And that might have been because it was like 20 years ago, and now mankind's starting to be able to open to that red. Listen to the color of thought on red. Really, it really taught me something going over it again. All of them, in fact. It's um, it's a review that even has helped me. So with that final um, hurrah, <laughs> be well, 
thank you so much for coming and sharing everything and um, have a good night I think I've got Chinese waiting for me <laughs> and I will um, see you on Friday maybe if not it'll be Sunday with Matthew and uh, as I said love you be well and may the power of love be with you always <laughs> good night